Welcome to the wonderful world of significant figures. Everyone's favorite topic in chemistry, and not the most exciting one you'll have this year. But they're important. They're significant, by definition. And what they do is they tell us the level of detail with which we know a measurement. So, to put that in perspective, what that means, with these three different balances, I'm weighing the same object. With the first balance, there's not much detail that can be given in the answer. So, you can only approximate one digit when you're recording a measurement. So, this clearly falls somewhere between 0 and 100, and you can only approximate the tens place. So, you would say that that's about 20 grams. You'd be right. But, if on that scale, you had more lines in it, and you could actually estimate with greater certainty, if you had the 10 marks there, then you could approximate this to be somewhere between 20 and 30 grams, you'd say a little bit less than halfway, and you could say 23. So with this scale, you would have a much um, greater amount of knowledge about the information you're given. And then if we went even further, and we broke that down, and you could see it to the um, tenths place, you could approximate this to the 23.5 grams. So depending on what instrument you're using to measure something, you know a different amount of detail. The more detail you have, the more certainty with which you can do calculations using that measurement. So, the other thing we're going to have to do is analyze numbers that were given in problems for the amount of significant figures they have or the amount of detail that they give us. So, we're going to use the box and dot method this year, and it's pretty simple. So, the first thing you do is you create a box that begins with the first non-zero number and ends with the last. And anything within that box is significant. So, let's look at these three numbers right here. First to non-zero and last. Boom. Boom. So anything in there, they all have at least three significant figures within the measurement. Now, the second rule, and there's only two, which is nice because the other rules are like five. If a decimal is present, count any zero after the box. In this first one, there's no decimal present, so you don't count those zeros. In this one, there's a decimal present, so that zero after the box counts. So this would have four significant figures, whereas this would only have three. We don't count these zeros in front because they're not after the box, which is what they would need to do to count. Then if we look at this last one, there's a decimal, zero after the box, count it. So we can see that with these two measurements, we know four significant figures. Now, these could actually all be the same exact object because these numbers are all equivalent. This is in millimeters, this is in kilometers, and that's in meters. So this one, the reason these two numbers in front don't count is really because they're just placeholders. Okay, so that same thing, described in different terms, would give you a different amount of significant figures, and they don't really have anything to do with the level of detail with which you know the measurement. Okay, and the last thing in this video is, if you're given a number like 50,000, you're really only supposed to assume that you have one significant figure. But what if you knew three of them? You can't really present that with this number. So what we do is use scientific notation to indicate that. So 50,000, you would just assume this has one sig fig. But if you have this number in scientific notation written as 5.00 times 10 to the fourth, you would have three significant figures. So if we want to indicate more than one significant figure in a number like that, it's important that we use scientific notation. And that's, that's the important thing here.